Hey y'all, today we're going to be looking at ions and using the periodic table to be able to predict the charges of atoms when they turn into ions. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing to keep in mind is that we have talked about three subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. And of these three, two of them have charges. Protons have a plus one charge and electrons have a minus one charge. When an atom is in its normal state, the number of protons and electrons are equal. But when an atom becomes an ion, what ends up happening is you have an imbalance of the number of protons and electrons. In the event you have more electrons than you do protons, the atom is going to be negatively charged because there's more electrons, more negative charged particles than positive. And in the event there are more protons than electrons, it's going to be positively charged. Let's take a look at what this means. So for example, if I have a sodium atom in front of me, now sodium atoms, if you look at the periodic table, have 11 protons. It's number 11 on the periodic table. If that sodium atom were to have 10 electrons, what would its charge be? Well, it has 10, 11 protons, all right? And those 11 protons each have a plus one charge. If it has 10 electrons, each with a minus one charge, then its total charge is gonna be positive one, plus one. So to reiterate, an ion is an atom where you have an imbalance of charge, where you have more protons than electrons or more electrons than protons. When we look at ions, we categorize them based on what their relative charge is. If an ion is formed through the loss of an electron, that means it's going to have a positive charge, all right? And we call it a cation. Now, a mnemonic device you can use here is that cations, like cats, are positive. Get it? Pa positive. So cations are positive ions. Anions are formed when you gain electrons. So when you go from an atom that's neutral, charge of zero, gain an electron, you become negatively charged. This is an anion. Another way of thinking about this is it's a negative ion, anion. The way we're going to predict the charges on atoms this year is going to be using the periodic table. Remember, the periodic table is created by Mendeleev to base it off of chemical similarities. One of the similarities between the different elements is going to be how many electrons they tend to gain or lose when they become ions. So if we look at, for instance, the alkali or metals, which are in group number one, they generally have a charge of plus one, all of them. That means they are going to all lose one electron when they become their ion. On the other side of the periodic table, the halogens, you look down that line, now all of a sudden that group, all of those atoms share a similar charge of minus one when they become ions. So again, very similar in terms of the groups they're in. When we look at the periodic table, like I said, we can make general rules of what charges atoms would have, but be careful, keep in mind, that these apply to metals and non-metals. They really don't apply to the metalloids. And in the areas where you have that metalloid staircase, when you go from metal to non-metal or non-metal to metal as you're going down it, be aware that the charges no longer really apply anymore. So this is a limited scope, what we can use this for, but we will use it pretty commonly as the year goes on. So when we look at the periodic table, the key here is it's how many electrons you gain or lose to become isoelectric to a noble gas. Noble gases are in the far right column. This is group eight. And what we see in the noble gases is a relatively stable electron configuration. When we look at this, what we're going to see is that all of the alkali metals would have to lose one electron to become isoelectric to a noble gas all the halogens would gain one to become isoelectric to a noble gas. And again, isoelectric means same number of electrons. The other thing to be aware of is there's that rectangular area of the periodic table in the middle. We call this the transition metal. And these transition metals also don't really behave in the same way. In fact, many of them have multiple possible charges. Don't worry about that yet. We'll get there later in the year. So let's just do a practice problem real quick. Can you tell me what the charge on a calcium ion would be? Well, take a look at the periodic table. What group's it in? It's in group two. 
All right, these are the alkaline earth metals. Group two are going to lose two electrons to become isoelectric to the noble gases, group eight, which means that calcium is going to become a plus two ion when it does become an ion. All right, another example. Tell me, what would the charge of sulfur be if you looked at it becoming an ion? Well, in this case, sulfur is a nonmetal. It's on the right side of the periodic table, and therefore it's going to be actually closer to the halogens, or I mean closer to the noble gases, by gaining two electrons. So by gaining two electrons, it becomes isoelectric to the noble gases, and as a result, is going to have a minus two charge when it becomes an ion. The other thing to keep in mind is I've used this term isoelectric as we've gone through this video. Isoelectric means that two atoms or ions have the same number of electrons. And you can do this in a number of ways. Remember, what makes an element unique is going to be the number of protons in it. So if I were to look at three different atoms, two of which are ions, one of which is its non-charged or neutral configuration, here I've got fluorine in its ionic form, F minus. I've got neon without charge. And I've got sodium, which is in its plus one form. Now, if you look at these, all three of them have the exact same number of electrons. They each have 10 electrons. They are therefore isoelectric to each other. Okay, so what would it take for three other atoms to become isoelectric? Look at iodine, cesium, and xenon. How many electrons would they have when they were isoelectric to each other? Well, look at cesium. It's in the alkali metal group. Because it's in the alkali metal group, it's going to lose one electron to become isoelectric to that xenon atom. Meanwhile, iodine, which is a halogen, is going to gain one electron to become isoelectric to that xenon. Xenon, being a noble gas, is not going to readily gain or lose any electrons. We're gonna, again, we're going to talk a little bit about why that is a little bit later in this unit. But understand that the noble gases do not readily gain or lose electrons. The final thing we're going to cover in this video, and this is only going to be your first kind of look at these, but we're going to see them a lot this year, are called polyatomic ions. Polyatomic ions. These are groups of multiple atoms that are all bound together, but as a group have a charge. So for instance, if I look at the polyatomic ion sulfate, sulfate is comprised of one sulfur atom, four oxygen atoms, and as a whole, it has a charge of minus two. Hydroxide is another polyatomic ion. This is OH minus. It's comprised of one oxygen and one hydrogen atom, and combined together, has a charge of minus one. Again, this is not necessarily something that will come into play as much beyond unit zero, but you do need to understand that these polyatomic ions have a charge as a group. Also, just a heads up, you are expected to memorize a number of these polyatomic ions, check your memorization sheet, and that's going to give you the ability to know these before unit one when we get into nomenclature and really start talking about these full force. So that wraps up today's video. Today we learned about ions, which are atoms that have gained or lost electrons. Remember, cations are positive, anions are a negative ion. When you look at ions, you can look at what they're going to become or what atoms will become as ions based on the periodic table. And we learned how to tell when two atoms becoming ions would be isoelectric to each other. So these are all conversations we're going to continue as the year goes on, but it's really important to know them now. Remember, you will have memorization sheet ions to know before the first exam. So make sure you look at those and start getting to know those ions early. That way you don't have to worry about cramming them later on in the summer. Today's video was written, directed, produced, and edited by Annie Kelleher and Abby Law. I'd like to thank you all for watching it. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Is that good? Yeah. Hmm. What do you think? Reshoot it, clean it up, and try to get it in the right order? Yeah. Okay. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Okay.
So let's start with that. Perfect. Perfect. Seven, six, seven. Seriously? Can you uh, just wave your arm at the, there's a, you walk around there. All right. There it goes. Classic. Okay. So let's just do a practice, practice, practice. I felt um, like a lot. That was good. Uh, I felt like I was.